Uh, this time, I'd like to call up and introduce, actually no introductions needed, one of my dear friends, brothers, comrades, mentor, teacher, and uh, we share a sleeping bag on the Mauna. <laughs> I'd like to call up uh, one of our great Hawaiian educators, Hawaiian language expert, political theorist, teacher, consciousness raiser, Kaleko Akael. Mahalo Kaleko. I want to point out the ability to walk amongst the people is a sign of a true leader. Kaleko flew in from Maui, no notice, and caught the bus over here. I appreciate that. Mahalo. E to puatani, e a te Māori ola. E ola hoki, o Māori ola. E ola ia oe tāni tūne nōna, oia, o oia te ola. E ala ua o ngā alama lama wa hele kāna kai nuna. Ua kai waka waka ula, kaha waka li. Nā ui hoa e kawa puama, puama uli puama ke amo akane moa i ni maha i ki nā kau. Lele i kalani. O wau ke ni uli ue e a kau ke a kano ia mai tai ni tū. Black Hawaiian, the black Hawaiian. 
Hawaiian, the white Hawaiian, the yellow Hawaiian, the curly hair Hawaiian, the long hair Hawaiian, the bullet hair Hawaiian. Pursue. 
Asian were still living in caves and eating cold meat, as I say. That's the truth. They ever heard of the Dark Ages? So while they're in the Dark Ages, we were building a great civilization here. But you see what made us so understanding, knowledgeable as a people, really is the idea of aloha, which you see coming through. See, that's the science. Aloha. To have compassion, to have love, to share, to tell the truth. That's the sign of society. Not one of taking care of a few. We had no homeless in our society. We didn't have people who were hungry. And yet they tell us that they're the civilized nation. I know this when Captain Cook came. At least the wine is made every day. And they tell us we were the savages. So you gotta understand, it depends on who's the storyteller. And in this history, I know, when we came with this Bob, and we created this great society, even when Captain Cook himself landed on these shores, he was really impressed with what he saw. He never saw a place so developed in regards to for food production and cleanliness. See, if they call it as clean, it makes you wonder what they were like. If you looked around and said, wow, these guys were healthy, it makes you wonder what they were like. But yet they called us the savages. See, this question of humanity is the core issue in this question. This movement is about us as a people reclaiming our humanity as a people. We no longer shall tolerate others to tell us what our destiny will be, what is or what is not sacred, what our history is, what our culture is. Because we understand today that power to define is the question of power. Who the hell are they to tell us what is sacred? Who are they to tell us our history? We all know our history. Captain Cook discovered us in 1778. Hell no. We've been here for 2,000 years. And in our history, we know. We all should know this history. In 1810, Kamehameha unites the islands. In 1839, we have our first Declaration of Rights. 1840, we have our first Constitution. In 1843, we become a recognized independent nation state. The first non-European nation state. That's our Kukuna who did this. That's our humanity. But you see in the educational department, in the schools, they forgot about this history. Not by chance, but by purpose. See, that's our humanity. So when people talk about, oh, you Hawaiians, you guys want sovereignty. You see, that's part of the fool's game. Because if you understand the history, you realize from 1843 on, we have been the sovereign people in this land. That is the truth. We also got to recognize what went down. 1854, we recognized as a neutral country. A neutrality is understood around the world. 1887, begins the downfall with the Bayonet Constitution, the first half of the so-called overthrow. 1893, they land their troops with guns. Not a process of revolution by the people against the wealthy and the oppressors. It was the oppressors themselves with the guns who came in to try and snatch, and I use the word, try and snatch away our rights as a people to be free humans upon this land. And in July 1993, to push a fake session, a treaty of annexation. And we do know the President of the United States at that time, Grover Cleveland, takes it away. 
and says, in fact, he doesn't recognize the so-called puppet government, neither de facto de jure. Well, these cats, of course, the so-called comedia safety, the provisional government, transformed itself to what becomes the Republic of Hawaii in 1894. And by 1897, they push again for another treaty of annexation. And in this treaty of annexation attempt, our people unite. Virtually all Hawaiians unite in this struggle. Led by the two Hui. Hui Aloha and Hui Kalai Aina to amass the so-called two eight petitions. Which forever seals the voices of our people who said we don't want annexation. We don't give our consent to the taking of one, our nationality and our national lands. That is our record. That is something we all should know. That is something we all should celebrate. That is something we want to make sure everyone understands that question. That we never gave up our consent as a people. We never gave up the title to our national lands. And we will forever, I said, forever fight until the last Allah Aina lives. And what happens to the so-called Treaty of Annexation 1897? Well, the Queen Liliokhan also submits a protest letter and the so-called treaty fails. It fails. I repeat, the so-called treaty of annexation fails. So the lie of a treaty is a lie. It's fraud, it's a facade. There is no treaty of annexation. In 1898, the United States military already planning a war with the Spanish to build the empire, this imperial empire of expansion into the Pacific and into the Atlantic. The so-called Spanish-American War will preoccupy Hawaii to prepare for this war. And Hawaii then is claimed to be taken via what's called the New Lands Resolution of 1898. Again, was it a treaty? Aole. Aole. It was a resolution. And anyone can tell you, take your civics, take your basic political science 101, you should know. The power of resolution of a country is only within the defined borders of that country. It has no effect in a foreign country. In a country like ours, which by that time already had five treaties with the United States. The problem is, there isn't a six, you see, that's the problem. But they make believe, they pretend, they lie as if there is a six. See, that's the game. Our minds have been pimped, as you may think, to somehow believe that there was some kind of legal action to take our lands, to take our nationality, all of it being fraud. In 1900, the so-called Organic Act Another scam, but he basically said the Republic of Hawaii cedes all their lands, whatever lands they may be, to the United States. Of course, the question is, well, what the hell lands did the Republic of Hawaii actually own? And if they own those lands, by what instrument, and in what year, and in what exact case did they receive these lands? See, that's the fraud. It also says, interesting enough, all citizens of the Republic of Hawaii are now citizens of the United States. Okay? But who are citizens of the Republic of Hawaii? Less than 4,000 of them. They never address as us, we, the Kanaka. Because they can't. They cannot forcibly take someone's citizenship without their consent. But see, that's the game. And this lie was taught to us in schools. As Brother Skippy says, miseducation in the public education, fairy tales that you learned in school. No more true than Rumpelstiltskin and Snow White. 
The fact is, we never ceded these lands. We never gave consent to our nationality being taken. So we understand, we look at what's going on in Mount Nakia, we understand the reason why we're in this predicament is not only what they are doing to us, you see, you understand that? It's not just what they are doing to us, what they have done to us. It's also our failure to remember these stories and these histories. But you see, as we start to reawaken, see the good news is we never forget totally. The good news is our Kupuna kept these things all solidified as, as the great Uncle Eddie Kaanana used to tell us all the time. Liu Ikapaakai, Liu Ikapaakai, which means everything is salted. You know Kalikwa, everything your Kupuna did is out there. We never really lose nothing. And the idea of Liu Ikapaakai, just like when you salt the fish, where the fish is salted good so it's going to be preserved for a future time. And when you're ready to eat, you take the fish, you wash them off, get all prepared, and then you eat. See, a kupuna left all this for us. The kule petitions, the history in the newspapers, speeches by people like Navahi and Kalao Kalani and Robert Wilcox, all left for us to read and understand what our people thought. So all we got to do today, of course, is reawaken ourselves to understand this history, we teach this history. To remember our humanity. Our humanity is our kuniana. That's the thing we must remember. That's our kuniana. So I look at the question of Mauna Kea. We understand Mauna Kea is in this situation because they're taking advantage of our dehumanization. See, dehumanization is the idea that we are less than human. Dehumanization is the idea that we don't have a history. That we don't got a culture. That we don't have sacred space. Oh, maybe you think of things as being sacred, but we have something more important than that. So what you see happening around the care really is dealing with that question. This telescope, the TMT, is that we had enough as a people. You cannot go to the top of that mountain and not realize and not feel being invaded and not feel the eha. You know the word in Hawaiian? The mountain is being sat upon by these invaders without our consent. Upon the summit of that mountain that we know are part of our Aina Leali. These are crown lands belong to our people. There is no doubt. That is the true history. Lands that we've never given consent to be taken. So the question about the can what needs to preserve is our Kulia. It's not some scientist that you meet, which I've met. So they had scientists in places like the IFA, they're not even from this place. So I want that he's from Germany, and he's there telling me they need to use our mountain for their purposes, for their curiosities. I'll tell you a story about Maui, struggling over the question of Hanakala. About eight years ago, I met with the head person with the NSF, the Solar Observatory. His name, Craig Foltz. Craig Foltz. Craig Foltz. <laughs> National Science Foundation. See, these are the kind of people we gotta confront. And I asked him, I said, you know, Gandhi said, the great Gandhi said, one of the seven sins is science without humanity. Science without humanity. So I asked him, and I said, where's the Kanaka? I want to know, what is the humanity? Tell me why you got to desecrate us. Why I got to feel this era. What is the humanity? And his exact quote were in his words, which I'll never forget. Pure, selfish research. Pure, selfish research. 
And I looked at him and in my mind I wish I could reach across and choke him by his neck. <laughs> That's the truth. How dare this guy come to our land and ignore my humanity as a person. See, I was there to find out maybe he had some kind of great... Because you don't know how this truth. I tell you right now, right. if there was something of great... You're going to save lives. You're going to feed people. I can take the air out of Hawaii. I know that. Because my culture tells me so life is the most important thing out there. Well, Kapu Kiola, Yakani. Life is what's important. But all he got to say to me was, pure selfish research. Great folks. Great folks. Great folks. May his name never be forgotten in Hawaii. You see, be these guys coming to town thinking that their scientific research outweighs our humanity, our ways of knowing. And the only way they can do it, you see, you understand, the only way they can do it is to see us as less than human. That our history is not real history. That our culture is not real culture. Right. Our spirituality, eh, not that important. And many of us who've been through this process, we know this. Hearings after hearings, testimonies, EISs, EAs, through all the various processes. And you see, right at the Palapala, you say, oh yeah, a very important culture and sacred site. And then, they build them anyway. Why even go through the process? Why dehumanize us in this process? Because they can. Because in the eyes, Hawaiians are less than human. You can understand that. They see us as people that have yet no history and sense of humanity. But you see, the bottom line is this. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what many may try anymore. Because our people know for themselves our history. We know our culture. We know we have a right to self-determination. We know we have a right to define. And we refuse to allow these people anymore. As they say, just say no. <laughs> to tell us what our lives should be. Who should define for us what is ours. And who should determine for us our path into the future. That is our Kuliana. As people have been here for 2,000 years again. But this is a struggle. And again, I use this word struggle because it is one. It takes commitment, it takes dedication, it takes sacrifice. And I look in the young eyes of those who are on the mountain. I saw all of that. Gee, I never passed my first page, I better put this page. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let <laughs> me save this one for later or something. <laughs> But this also tell our people, especially in Kanaka Maoli out there, our lives are not cheap. Our lives are not cheap. You know, when Cook came, there were about 800,000 of us, maybe up to a million. And by the time of the overthrow, there were only 40,000 of us who survived. Only about 5%. Only 1 in 20 survived by 1893. I want you guys to think about this, all your wives. Remember this. 19 of the 20 didn't make it through. And we who are here are the descendants of that 5%. So our lives are not cheap. Our lives are special. As the Kupuna say, Ua pao, ua halalako, akoi no na pua. Ua pa, ua halalako, akoi no na pua. And we are a pua. And we're still here. And we're getting more educated. And we're getting stronger. And we're getting tougher. 
and we grow in his Allah Hui. As his words, a whole Allah Hui inspired us to understand. They may have been 40,000 back then, but they are about half a million of us today. And I say, maybe we don't have the power of the gun, but we have the power of truth and the power of aloha, including the kind of aloha when we're going to be up to a million Hawaiians in here real soon. We're going to make our way to the top. That's one of the things I would say, make to the Hawaiian today, support the cause. As the great Mama Hadi used to tell me, and cause really tell the girls that I would listen, and she would say, don't look at it, get at it. <laughs> Well, I think you also got to understand, you see, the so-called settler, the so-called occupier, colonizer, foreigner, who come to Hawaii, the Kolea. See, one of the jobs is to confuse us, as the great Kwame Turi tells us. They want to make you believe that their culture and your culture are one and the same. They want to make you believe their history and your history are one and the same. Their heroes and your heroes are one and the same. You see, once they get you thinking in that way, you effectively have become them. Their goal is to erase your humanity. And in that erasure, you become a supporter. See, the term hegemon is a fancy term, perhaps, in political science. But again, it's an idea that strong influence which makes you become complicit, makes you become complicit, complicit in your own dehumanization, your own deculturation, your own sense of self-worth to support their goals over your own. In fact, you start to think that your own depravity is part of what's good. You start to believe when they tell you, oh, you Hawaiians, can I get along? Well, what happened in 1897? What is happening today? See, these are all part of this influence, these mind games, which are really meant to erase that sense of who we are. But see, once you know who we are, once you understand that history, there's no turning back. We got them on the run. They know it, and we know it. As the great Kwaipuna Preji, I use this word, you always say, take the chains off your brains. Take the chains off your brains. That we get so worried about the chains of our legs. But it's really about the chains of our brains that you worry about. Those chains make us feel afraid. Make us become apathetic. Make us become tame, docile, domesticated, willing. To be mistreated. And in this confusion, we forget our own understanding. Rakia Kupuna left us with all this knowledge. Aole Mako Emina Mina. Ikapu Kala Oke Aokuni. Walava Mako Ikapo Haku. Ika Eka Maha Oka Aina. Ika ai kamaha oka aina. What truly dead is important to us. But the aina, there is no summer. And I'm going to ask this to the trustees, and we're going to talk with them tomorrow, I guess. How much is our land's worth? How much is the mountain worth to our people? $10 million? $200 million? $1 billion? You see, we all know, in our hearts we understand, the bank account will do nothing to provide a future for us to be here 100 years, 500 years. What guarantees us a place here is air okaina. The air okaina. Air okaina. Not the size of your wallet or a bank account or your checking book. 
Hey, Okaina, the ability to live and feed and sustain yourself on this land, to determine yourself on this land, that is which we must fight for and understand. See, that's why Mauna Kea is such an important struggle. That's the highest peak in these islands. It's one of the most sacred and revered spaces for our people, which is currently occupied by telescopes from all over the world. How many Hawaiian telescopes we got up here? How many? Tell the truth. Have any up there? And we sit on the side looking at the telescopes as if it's ours. As if we got something to do with those telescopes. These telescopes are monuments of the settler racism, of the settlerism, this, this uh, process of colonialism, which they believe that their benefit outweighs ours as the native people here. But no longer will we be tamed, no longer will we be quiet, no longer shall we be confused. See, the medicine, the love for all of this is the education of our people. It's the commitment to this education. When we know our history, when we know our language, we know our culture, our dances, our prayers, our chants, there's nobody can defeat us in what we need to do. There's nothing that can stand away but just our own selves. See, they understand this. This is why they banned our language. This is why they denigrated our culture, denigrated our kupuna. Because they understood the way to control a people is to control their minds. The way to control a people is to control their souls. The way to control a people is to control their destiny. The way to control a people is to create disunity. And what you see happening in Hawaii today is the lap out to all of that. And we are the biggest threat to the so-called fantasies of the so-called master race who believe that their curiosities outweigh our humanity. And we must not be afraid to call them out of this. We must not be afraid to tell them they're a bunch of supremacists. We must not be afraid to tell them the truth of our history and our culture. We must not be afraid to tell them that we reclaim the right to define ourselves in our own lands. Aloha aina oya iho. Aloha aina oya iho. Aloha. To love and have this compassion. Aina. And it feeds us, sustains us, gives us all life. And oya iho. Truth. When I look as a philosophy and ideology to fight supremacy, to fight the kind of evil that is upon this land which believes that their desires outweigh our needs, is the philosophy of Aloha Aina Moi Iho. At all times, we must love, we must have compassion. At all times, we must remember first, as our kupuna said, the aipohaku, it's about the land. So we don't get distracted about the money, or entitlements, or what Washington DC is gonna do, or how many uh, revenue streams you're gonna get. And finally, the oya evil, that we must be truthful at all times. We must tell the truth. We must confront with truth. And this power of truth and love is the only thing, I repeat, it's the only thing that can defeat this empire which settles upon our mountains and our shores. This empire which has more nuclear weapons than any, in fact, all the other countries put together. And they talk about weapons of mass destruction. Send them off to Iraq and Afghanistan. And holy crap, all you gotta do is open your eyes and understand weapons of mass destruction are right here in our own backyard.
There's no place that's been as militarized, commercialized, missionized, deculturized as our people. And even though they got all their guns and bombs, and a history of using those nasty instruments of death upon native peoples, all you gotta do is read your history. I believe, and I know all of us believe here, there's one thing that can conquer that. And that's the power of Aloha Aino Oyingo. So, it's not if they come, but when they come to the Mount Eta, with all their guns, whether it's the police or state police, or the National Guard, as the rumors have been said, we will show our strength as a people to resist, to confront with love and truth and determination. They may come to us one day, we'll be back up there the next. They may take 50 the first day, we'll come back with 100. They take the 100, we'll bring 500. They take 500, we bring 1,000 up to the mountain. And I want the world to see these armed guards taking away our kupuna, our makua, and even in our king to show the world that we demand our right to be human beings and be free in this world in our own land. We demand our humanity, even in the face of their weaponry. Because we know in the end we got love and truth on our side, and the love and truth is going to keep us here in this land. All it takes for us is our commitment to those principles. Because our power comes from this Aina. And it's to me, it's not no coincidence that from this Aina, from the highest point, the closest to the heavens, is leading us all through this path. See, this is the rebirth. This is the rebirth of our Lahui. This is the rebirth of our unity as a people. This is required of our community to take our future in our hands. Whether it's education, whether it's the revitalization of our language and culture, whether it's putting us back in our homelands, it's up to us to make it happen. Because all we gotta understand that dominated oppressor will never give unto us what is ours. It is only us through our unification, through our love of this place, is gonna take us where we need to go. And we all have a role in this, everyone, to take our part, to take our place, to move us forward, to learn our history. <laughs> yeah, man. Let me just end. Since we're in Oha, I just want to maybe I leave the ghosts of my words to the trustees tomorrow. The people have awakened and are on a move. Our people are on a move. As I, as I told one of the trustees last week, whether Oha supports us or not, we are moving. And it's up to Oha and the trustees themselves to decide Oh, I wish just for once that they're the side of the people. When I hear stories of millions of dollars that are going to be given away very soon for the so-called nation-building campaign, a couple of million dollars to play around with nameless. See, nameless isn't nation-building. This is nation-building going on right now. Nation building is struggling. Nation building is standing with your people for this man. That's not the way. No nameless is going to give us where we need to go. And we, have, we all understand that. We understand that here. 
And two million dollars will be going in that direction. And not even 25 cents, not even 25 cents from our monies is going to support the struggle. I use the word the, the struggle of our people today. See, the truth is telling. The truth reveals. But I have hope. If I didn't hope, I wouldn't say this. We got to have hope as a people. At all times, we got to hold on our hands, all our hands, to come and join and unite and understand. Our unity as a people is number one. And let me just end by saying, and for all the non-Kanaka who are here, who live here, have Keiki here, Mo'opuna here, who have parents have been buried here. And I always say this, I know one day your Eve and my Eve will be in this ground together. One day your grandchild and my grandchild may get together. So in the end, it's all of our kuleana to make the best of this place. Because aloha oye iyo is that which can bind all of us, all of us, all of us, for a richer and better tomorrow. Imua kako, aloha. Yeah.